Oh, hello, a garden frog. Hey, Toadie. Good morning, sir. It's okay, you're safe. Thanks for eating the bugs. So it's actually early in the morning. I've been getting out here probably a little before seven um, to work out in the garden, have some nice quiet time. One of the things that I'm planning on trying to do today is put these green stalks up here in the front and that's what I'm actually gonna be talking to you guys about today. So I got these two green stalks and we actually put a little paver on either side of the front porch of our greenhouse and it's perfectly level so I can sit my green stalks on it and I've got the little spinners that I'm gonna put it on. And in these, I am planning on primarily planting flowers here right in the middle of the cottage gar garden because I'm wanting to have them as kind of more of a statement piece. So these two are the leaves and I'm gonna go to the front and show you uh, my others that I have set up. They're just so tall. These are the seven tier leaves and so they're about as tall as I am and I like having them right here in the front and they'll just be kind of like a focal point that flanks both sides of this but I didn't want them right next to it because I wanted to be able to open the doors all the way. Uh, so we had this little section off on the front which I thought was really cute and it's going to look really good whenever they're full of um, color and foliage and whenever all of this cottage garden is grown up around them they'll just be another thing that's adding height and drawing the eye down with all of these lines to what is essentially this focal point in the garden you've got the uh, fountain and the behind it the way the doors open on the greenhouse and the stained glass art so it's going to go on both sides of that and I think it's going to look really good so peaceful my little garden in front of the house is kind of starting to look like something got a little more planting to do down here and I'm gonna move these beds out uh, but it's looking looking really good We're harvesting lots of salad greens out of this green stalk it's really starting to warm up here so I'm gonna be harvesting uh, these more heavily in the coming probably week and a half or so just because um, at some point they're going to go to seed because it's so warm in South Carolina. Here I've got some chamomile. All the little buds are closed up because it's early in the morning. <laughs> but it's kind of impressive sticking out like that. That's just one plant of chamomile. I have some odds and ends herbs in here. Some sage, parsley, oregano. This is a chard that came up from seed kind of late and was so determined to grow that I let it. And all through the rest of these pockets, I have strawberry plants. See them here, filled in all the empty spaces with these. And those will be there for multiple seasons. So the day that you see this, Monday, May 2nd, is the day that Greenstalk is actually launching their biggest sale of the year, the annual Mother's Day sale, where the five-tier original planter is under $100 if you stack a coupon code like mine, which is Roots10. So they're on sale for $109, and then the coupon code brings them down under $100. And in honor of that sale, uh, because I do think green stalks are a great Mother's Day present. I wanted to do a video kind of talking about these, kind of talking about how I use them, and throw out some ideas where I think they would be a really great application. I've been growing in green stalks for almost about about four years now I got my first one in 2018 um, my original green stalks whenever I moved to South Carolina I gave them to my mom she's still growing in them I call her the green stalk queen because she grows so much stuff in them uh, because she's a container gardener she doesn't have a whole lot of in-ground space she's growing mostly in containers and her back porch has now I think like five green stalks on it and they're all just slammed full of food now I have them here out front I have a lot of space so I like to use green stalks for two things mostly. <clears throat> I love salad greens and I love strawberries and green stalks because they stay really clean. It alleviates the pest pressure not having them down on the ground. And if you've ever picked a strawberry or salad green, you know, they're really soft. And so if they do get dirt on them, it can be kind of hard to get that dirt off without damaging the leaves or the fruit. So I like the fact that when they're just sticking out of a planter like this, I can come up and pluck them and not have any soil on them whatsoever. They don't 
suffer from splashback or anything like that. And with strawberries, uh, you know, slugs can be kind of an issue. Pests can be kind of an issue when the fruit's laying directly on the soil. And whenever you grow them in the towers, they just hang over the edge, which keeps them clean and pest free. And the other thing I really like to use green stalks for is just the fact that they're a tall focal point that feels, fills out and looks really beautiful. And so that's what I'm doing in my cottage garden with those two towers. Another big factor that I'm not using them for, but a lot of people are, is if you are on limited space. So I'm always touting the message to turn your waiting room into a classroom. And frankly, that can be really hard to do if you're living in an apartment, if you're living in a place where you're not allowed to build anything or dig into the ground. And that's where container gardening often comes in. I was a container gardener first. I did not have green stalks at that point. Uh, they weren't yet invented, but I would have loved to have something like this on my back porch that I could come and harvest food out of a small space. This chamomile is really like wanting a close up here. It's like tickling my back. I see a lot of people having success like my mom that maybe are in a place where they're growing in containers and especially if you are growing for just a couple of people with a few of these towers you really can grow a substantial amount of food. For instance, I've got all of these salad greens in here. This has provided countless salads over the course of the last couple of months as well as feeding my son's bearded dragon um, and I've got organic salad greens right here whereas a blister pack of those at the store is like six or seven dollars for for that one container that you go through in a few days and it goes bad really fast whereas here I've been coming out and just picking fresh greens for months at this point these greens have have saved me a lot of money so I've done videos in the past showing putting together a green stalk I will link that that content if you're the kind of person before you buy something that really likes to consume a lot of reviews about it I have past videos about it but today I'm gonna go over a few ideas on how to use these as well as how to have the best success out of them the main thing with any container gardening is that you want to make sure that you are fertilizing these on a regular basis which is not difficult to do the way the green stalks work is is they have this little reservoir up in the top that just clicks on and it has holes in it around each area so basically when you water it drips down into the next section but underneath here you can kind of see that gray down there that's another reservoir and there's a reservoir between each of these tiers so when you water in the top it actually flows down and it waters each one of these pockets now I know that they used to suggest that you fill it up to a certain level for however many tiers it is they've since changed that suggestion and the green stock company says to water the top until water comes out the bottom containers have to be watered more than gardening even in raised beds or in the ground. Uh, raised beds have to be watered a little more than growing in the ground. This is just kind of the nature of container gardening. You're going to water more. So when it starts to warm up like it is right now, um, it's just really starting to get warm here in South Carolina where we're over 80 degrees every day, 26 Celsius. And I am out here watering these at least every other day right now. So I always set up my green stalks near a source of water so I don't have to tote water. And I usually just just stick the hose in the top and wait until I see water coming out the bottom and then move on to the next one it doesn't take very long and usually I'll just set the hose in there and work on something else while it fills up once every week or so I don't do this like clockwork um, I get a liquid fertilizer like Neptune's harvest um, Fox Farms makes a good liquid fertilizer always follow the instructions when you are using fertilizer with your plants if mcdonald's has taught us anything let it be that supersizing is really not good for you so supersizing your fertilizer on your plants it's not a case of more is better follow the instructions because you actually damage your plants by using too much fertilizer and it's a very small amount that's actually necessary to feed plants in a container like this because you have to keep in mind what you're really aiming for here is keeping your soil healthy not just keeping your plants healthy so if you are looking at your containers like your green stalks or buckets or whatever you're growing in and you're thinking those plants seem fine I don't need to water them um, what you could end up doing is damaging your soil so I water every other day
even if my plants look fantastic uh, just because I want to make sure that my soil doesn't get hydrophobic and I go ahead and fertilize about every week or two just to make sure that there's life in that soil and that all of the microbiome that's living in that soil can maintain a healthy community so that they can maintain soil structure and therefore I'll have healthy plants in there but remember when you're gardening you're really not looking to just feed and water your plants you're looking to feed and water your soil and then healthy plants grow in healthy soil so all you have to do is follow the instructions on that fertilizer I usually keep a five gallon bucket handy I think it probably got filled with pig scraps last night because it's up there with a lid on it uh, usually I have a five gallon bucket right here I have a hose right here and I take that liquid fertilizer and then I, I do half the five gallon bucket at a time because that's all I can lift but then you just pour it up into here and the green stock its watering system makes it really easy to fertilize your plants also now one thing that I have heard the praises of green stock sung over is they're very popular among communities that have disabilities because if people are in wheelchairs or they're not able to do um, lifting or anything like that a lot of people have had success with using these green stalks because aside from the initial setup where you're actually having to fill these with soil and lift them up they can be cared for without any heavy lifting and if you have an extension nozzle on your water hose you can even water these from a seated position because all you have to do is get the water into this top container Another tip if you want to have success with green stalks or any container garden is make sure that you are using the right soil. Um, I've had a couple of people tell me that they really struggled with their green stalk and usually when I say well what kind of soil were you using a lot of times that's the issue. So you want to get a good potting mix. So for the five tier original that I mentioned was on sale right now it's going to take about four bags of soil well, really, let me say, it, it's going to take about five cubic feet of soil to fill this one. So here's a bag of my favorite soil. It's called Bacto. Um, I get this just at the local farm supply store. I've seen it at nurseries also. It usually costs significantly more there. So I like to go to the farm supply store, the feed store. And this 50 pound bag, it takes me, I think, four of those to fill one of these green stalks. And when you're filling your green stalks, you really want the soil to be all the way to the top. Mine's actually a little low right now. Um, it just settled in and that soil had a little more mulch in it than is normal. Um, ideally though, you want these to be just a little bit higher than what I have mine. Obviously that's ideal. Sometimes things will grow just fine, but if you're ever troubleshooting, it's best to put everything at the ideal setting. Um, mine are growing really well, even though the soil is just a tad bit low. What you want to avoid though is um, uh, garden soil if you see it there are bags of soil that just say garden soil and usually that is denser um, things that are actually formulated for potting soil potting mixes they'll have like these little bits of perlite in them these little things that look kind of like styrofoam it's not styrofoam it's a uh, perlite and a lot of times they'll have like peat moss or something else that's mixed in that makes that lighter and the reason for that is in a container your soil might get drier easier especially if you're not watering it very very disciplined um, and they also can get just more compacted and garden soil usually does not have the elements in it that lighten it up so when you are using containers if at all possible you want to put potting mix in it anytime I say that I'll have people say all I've ever used is garden soil all I've ever done is dug soil out of my yard and put it in and they say they've had success and that is great just like I said sometimes I'm not even doing things in the ideal way and I'm still having success but when we're teaching people especially people who are getting started telling people the baseline of what is ideal then giving permission for them to like waver on that a little bit is how I like to do it because that way if somebody does have a failure they can go back and say well where is it that my problem came in and if you have really dense compacted soil that very well can be a problem but you're gonna need those bags of potting mix um, you do not have to change your soil out every season in a green stock. I have seen people say that I, I don't do that. Um, that would not be very cost prohibitive. So I put the soil in and then I amend it. I have used the same, I think I had the same soil in a green stock for like th what three years before I moved. I did not refresh that soil with new soil every season. So I use that fertilizer throughout the season. And then at the end of the season, obviously with the strawberries, they stay in for a while. My mom's green stock still has the strawberries in it that I planted in it years ago. Uh, so if I have plants in there, 
that are staying, I amend around those plants with things like worm castings, compost, and I just top dress those plants. But for things that come out, like these salad greens, those plants will just come out at the end of the season. I'll pull them out entirely. Oh, Katie's being the guard dog. And then I just fill those pockets in the green stalk back up to the top with compost and worm castings. Just about an inch or so of good compost in these every season gives the soil the refresher it needs. And then obviously you're gonna keep fertilizing it throughout the season and that works really well for me. All right, the next tip is really not so much a tip, but it's just a question that I get asked a lot about green stalks and that is which, what is better? Should you sow from started plants or should you sow from seeds? Um, I have have done both successfully. I like sowing green stalks from started plants more than I like sowing them from seeds just because it's more instantly gratifying because they're so pretty when they have something sticking out of them and obviously they look empty when you sow seeds in them. So if I have the started plants, that's what I'll do. Uh, but like I have grown many things from seed, like this chamomile is from seed, that chard that I showed you that was from seed. I've sowed an entire green stalk from seed, but you can do both seed or, or plants. But if you're starting from seed, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're watering that daily to keep the surface the soil moist so that those seeds will germinate. Now I want to share my ideas. So I have, like I said, I've grown a green stalks for a while. At this point between my mom and I, I've seen a lot of stuff growing in there in these. And while I do revert to using them for the same things that I really like to use them for, because that's the need I have, I have seen my mom grow cucumbers in there. I've grown cucumbers in here. She set up melons in it once and had like the whole trellis system thing around it. Um, they make little supports that you can put on them for larger plants tomatoes. Um, she's put okra in them before. And of course, when you grow something like okra in a container, it's not going to get like as massive as it does if you grow it in the ground, but it still does produce. I think uh, there are a couple things that I would really love to see somebody do with a green stalk. So this chamomile that I put in here this year, like I said, this is just one plant. I sowed it from seed in here. Um, I think it would be really cool to do a tea garden green stalk. So you could do like holy basil, chamomile, mint. I have put mint in green stalks before because mint can be such a bully in the garden and take over an entire garden bed. But if you've got it in a container, you've got your, you know, containment. Um, <laughs> you would want to contain your mint. Lemon balm, just all of the different things that you could have on hand for drying. And just seeing how many flowers, which I have not been steadily picking these. Chamomile does produce more if you pick it, but it has lots of new buds on it. And just seeing how much one plant in the green stalk has produced chamomile with just a single tier of this. Um, you could grow five plants of this in here and you could have a lot of chamomile for tea. And I like to grow things, if I am limited on space, if I have to choose, well, what is it that I'm gonna give my space to? I like to give my space to things that are, are going to save me more money. Um, so that's why I like to grow salad greens at home in the green stock. Be dried tea, especially if you're buying organic tea, it can be really, expensive. It can add up if you're using a lot of it. I drink a lot of, of herbal tea. So being able to grow your own in a couple of square feet of space, I think would be a really cool use for a green stalk. The next idea, which I have, I have seen this done, and of course I'm kind of doing it myself, even though I spread my herbs throughout all of my towers out here, is the green stalk herb garden. Um, you know, a single little container of herbs runs a few dollars at the store. So if you have sage and oregano and thyme, rosemary, whatever herbs it is that you routinely use in your cooking, uh, you can have an entire herb garden growing just on the back porch of an apartment and that can offset the grocery bill. Also, I've said this before, I've said it recently, I just feel like cooking with fresh, fresh herbs is such a luxurious thing. For some reason, it just takes any food, even if you're making something super simple like jarred spaghetti sauce that you bought at the store, adding some fresh herbs to it just takes it to the next level. So I love having fresh herbs growing. And that's the kind of thing that if you get those established in the green stalk, you can leave those season after season. Obviously, if you live in a really cold place, um, you might need to bring this in to like the garage. It's what you don't wanna do is stick something like this in a garage and leave it over winter without touching it and then pull it back out to plant with it in spring. 
because at that point your soil is going to be really hydrophobic and likely um, have lost a lot of the life in it. You can, if you've done that, don't worry, you can bring it back, but you're going to have to really heavily amend that soil, make sure you're watering it real regularly and mixing organic matter throughout it so it can regain the ability to hold water. But yes, the green stalk herb garden, at one point I did do kind of some peppers and tomatoes and herbs in it kind of just to do the salsa garden idea. I don't really do that anymore because with the amount of peppers and tomatoes I'm growing in the raised beds and in the ground, it, I, it really just doesn't make sense for me other than to show that you can. But those are three ideas that I think are really great um, kind of introductory uses. And of course you can plant lots of things in them. Uh, Greenstalk has on their website listed what they suggest growing in each thing. So people often ask me, which one would you get? The original five tier, which has the deeper pockets or the more shallow leaf. And obviously I have both. I do think that the five tier is more versatile because everything that you grow in the leaf, you can grow in the five tier, but not everything that is suggested for the five tier is suggested for the leaf. So typically for things that have more shallow roots, like salad greens, they suggest the leaf planter, lots of the flowers and stuff you can put in the leaf planter. But for a lot of those larger veggies, especially if you're trying to push the limits with like melons or okra. So that's my little ode to green stock. Popped in and surprised the green stock family and when we were, Jeremiah and I were visiting in Knoxville, Tennessee for our birthdays in December and we just popped in and surprised them and they are just as precious in person as they have been through the computer all of these years that I've been working with them. Uh, this is a family run business. All of these products are made in the United States with food grade plastic and that is something that I'm really happy to get behind because I know that the people who are making these are being paired, paid a fair wage and it's a product that I feel strongly is good for growing food in. You know, I don't always really like talking about stuff, the stuff for gardening, uh, because I feel like a lot of people can take that the wrong way and think, I can't afford this stuff, so I can't garden. And that's really not the case. Um, with determination and resourcefulness, you can grow food even on a very low budget. However, a lot of people are looking for ways and solutions to their problems, and a lot of people are dealing with the problem of not having space, but really wanting to get started. So that's why I'm talking about this. That's why I'm sharing my experience, because if I can help you with my experience to make educated decisions with your money to find success in gardening, I want to be able to do that. And I do feel very confident in suggesting this product and I like to do these videos when they're on sale so <laughs> you can get a good deal. <laughs> so thank you guys for hanging out with me. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. I will put the link down there as well as my coupon code ROOTS10. And I will also say, if you made it here to the end of this video, that um, Green stock ships in order of um, orders coming in and I'm getting this video up on the front end of the sale so it, you can buy it and get yours as soon as possible because if you buy them on the front end of the sale you'll get them before Mother's Day but if they get a whole bunch of orders uh, you might not. So thank you guys. I bless you. Until next time.